Hi. Hi. Welcome to Corning's booth at Display Week 2024. We're glad to have you back. Um, this year we're focused on educating visitors about the fusion glass manufacturing process. So this is an innovative process that we use to make thin um, advanced glass that goes into displays. So into the panels and also on the covers of the devices themselves. So is on here? Yep. So this is actually an example from one of our customers, um, BOE. So we make the glass that goes into um, the panels and the back plane, also the color filter, but we also make cover glass as well for some of our other applications we're showing today. So it says low carbon initiative. Yes. So it's better for the environment? So let me tell you about that. So our process that I was mentioning is fusion this is um, a proprietary manufacturing process that makes glass that's actually formed in midair. And so it's, it's, it comes off of a draw and fuses together at the exact thickness um, that we'd like it to be. And in um, the right measurements that are most efficient for our customers. So whether you're making notebooks or large screen TVs, we make substrate sizes that are um, planned accordingly for our customers to maximize efficiency. So, um, what you were looking at here, this low carbon initiative, this is talking about how much recycled content our customer um, actually incorporates into their product. So, um, when we talk about recycled content, we're talking about the waste that's created when we make these enormous um, glass substrates. It's actually very minimal. So, what you see here, this is actually glass waste that comes off of one of those large substrate sizes. So the substrate is so large, it's actually the surface area of two king-size masters. So if you think about a sheet of glass that that's large and only produces this much glass waste, it's actually extremely efficient. All right, and uh, here there's a bunch more products on our market that use your technology? Yeah, so exactly. We're talking about, um, in this museum area here, this is showcasing all of the different applications that actually use our glass. So from small devices like wearables up to things like 75-inch TVs, our glass is important for the displays in those devices. What we're showing over here is um, a number of thicknesses that we're able to produce. So when I say um, the fusion manufacturing process, we're able to form the glass in mid-air at the exact thickness that our customers are looking for, no polishing required. So it's actually an incredible feat of engineering to um, deliver that kind of control of the glass. Thinner than the credit card. These are some examples of what the thinness feels like. So imagine a glass substrate that thin that's as large as two king size mattresses. All right. Glass is everywhere. Glass is everywhere, yes. So over here, what we're showcasing is um, a curved monitor from one of our customers. So it's and it actually uses two pieces of glass inside of the display. So the glass has to be um, a certain thinness to be able to bend in the way that our customer wants and still display beautifully. So this is an example of one thing that you can do with glass when you have that tight control of the thinness and the surface properties. And you can, you can bend here too? Yes, exactly. So this is actually um, our automotive display section. And um, I'd actually like to introduce you to one of my colleagues who will be talking about that. And he can tell you much more about how this is formed. All right. Okay. Yes, uh, so I'm Jake. I uh, work for Automotive Glass Solutions at Corning. And uh, what you're looking at here is actually dual 23.6 inch displays under a single piece of cover glass. Uh, the interesting thing about this cover glass is that it's shaped at room temperature. Uh, so we don't reheat the glass to, find, to get this curve. And you can actually see that here. This is an excellent demonstration of that process where this is glass and you can just shape it into the curve that you need. So right. based on what the manufacturer wants or what the OEMs would like, uh, you know, we have the ability to do that at room temperature. The reason that that matters is it's actually more sustainable. Uh, so by not reintroducing heat, you reduce the carbon footprint by about 25%. So this is also Gorilla Glass. It's for automotive grade. Uh, so it's got 24% recycled content. Uh, and then it's also as durable as Gorilla Glass, specifically designed, though, for automotive use. 
Nice. Uh, it doesn't impact the performance at all, the way you do this? It does not. It does not. So the optics aren't degraded by doing that. Um, the, the glass clarity stays the same. The durability stays the same. So there's a specific test called a head form impact test. So this glass actually passes that test at a 99.9% .9 or greater rate. Um, so it doesn't degrade optics and it doesn't sacrifice durability. Because that's the big deal. If you have the accident and you, have, you crash into your window, it's a lot of injuries and people getting cut. Right. on their infotainment, sure. which is kind of like a sad thing. Right, yes. But we, so this is designed specifically for that, for that use case, right? So, uh, you know, that is, again, that's called a head form impact test. Uh, and our auto-grade two Gorilla Glass, which is featured here, uh, passes that at greater than 99.9% rate. And it's fully touch? Mm -hmm. This is touch functionality. And so what it does is because the touch, touch functionality of our glass is so high, it gives you essentially a similar feel to what you would get with your phone, right? And so you get the same sort of touch and feel that you would get by using your mobile phone, and you get that same experience in your infotainment system. Excellent capacitive system. Yes. So here, like I was saying, we're showing off the um, manufacturing process that we use to make those advanced substrates that go into the displays, but also, as Jake was talking about, that goes <laughs> of automotive displays. So it's a huge process. This is a high-level overview of how it works. So my colleague here can show you um, some of the process steps. So, right here. so is this happening in Corning, New York? Not in Corning, New York. So we have a number of um, manufacturing facilities across Asia, um, around the world. But what we're really focusing on here is the, the process to make the glass. So it starts with a combination of raw materials that are mixed and informed. Um, and then we just walk through the several steps along the way, educating visitors on how it works, because this is such an important process for Corning. It's enabled our um, position in the display industry, but also access to other industries where we now provide the glass. Is that corn? It is not. No? So what's, what, how does it work? <laughs> it's, um, it's actually um, sand in a precise mix of raw materials. So it's um, a number of elements that are specifically combined to achieve specific attributes of the glass. So it's sand. highly dependent on what the glass is going to be used for. Not all sand is the same, right? The specific uh, granularity or the provenance of the sand is important and everything? Right, right. So it's just one, one element, but there's actually a number of elements. So you can see that we've combined 50 elements with silicon to create these glass compositions. So like I was saying, it depends on what the glass is going to be used for, and it's actually a very complex recipe to come up with these. So we have scientists that are consistently working on new compositions for new applications, such as in the display industry.